Social media has become an advancement, a revolutionary advancement to mankind, especially in terms of communication, where it benefits from breaking the barrier between information and the people. But what if our desire for a quick answer overpowers our sense of rationality? Especially in this modern age of Indonesia, where things like hoaxes, hate speech, and social media abuse have been such a big issue. But why is that? And as the youth of Indonesia, is there anything that we can do? Good afternoon. My name is Julia, and I'm from the Vocational School of Fine Arts. And today, I'm going to present a speech that in hope will break your stigma and also what you know about hoaxes and freedom of speech. Well, what we do know about hoaxes and hate speech is that it's not a new phenomenon. It has been happening for several years, even like before. But the thing is, even before the internet existed, rumors still exist. Rumors still travel faster than the truth. So the real question here is that, is social media really the one to blame? Because, yeah, is social media really the one to blame? Social media are really the one to blame. So what we need to do is that, is that we need to find the, the motive. We need to find the reason why people believe in hoaxes. And in order to do that, we need to find the source. So where does the source of hoaxes usually come from? Well, the sources of hoaxes usually come from an individual. And usually while well, it has a fanatical reason such as hatred, most of them is actually based to spark, to spark chaos. Things like rumors, urban legends, and also informational biases are the common ways to stir up the uneasiness in our society. But the thing is, even not only individuals, even common media outlet is guilty for taking things out of context just for the sake of gaining monetary benefit. So the real question is, does this mean that conventional media is the one to blame? Perhaps not, because even back in the days, journalism has been twisting words in order to gain monetary benefits, in order to get money. It's what they do. It's their job. But isn't it our job as individuals to properly read an article and to also draw a smart conclusion? The same thing also goes for hate speech. How can we determine when a hate speech gets harmful or even illegal? In the new legislation that was proposed by the Representative Council, it says that it forbids Indonesian citizens to criticize the president. It made me wonder, even though the law hasn't taken place yet, it made me wonder, is forbidding a speech, even hateful ones, a really good step forward? John Stuart Mill, a political philosopher, argued that by censoring a speech, even hateful ones, decreases our ability to determine about what is right and wrong. If our fundamental belief isn't argued against, then we won't attempt to question about what is true we lose objectivity. So perhaps regarding these issues about hoaxes and hate speech, there may be a direct solution, and that is to educate the people. But not only academically, no, we need to build character. So perhaps the best way to tackle this issue is by teaching critical thinking skills at school. By reminding people to question themselves, it might enable them to be better prepared when given an information. So, but sad, unfortunately, most educational program does not focus on this. They focus more on, ac on academic achievements. But I think that critical thinking is very essential and it should be a bigger part of our education system. Because with more intelligent people, it will lead to more critical thinking. And with more critical thinking, it will lessen our belief in hoaxes. But what about me? What can I do? What can I, as a young individual, do in order to fight this issue? One of the things that I can do is to spread more awareness. But to be honest, according to the Ministry of Information, despite being able to determine about a wrong or a right information, a lot of youths are still apathetic about it because they think that politics doesn't concern them. And this is something that might, they might not realize, is that not caring about politics is not a choice. It's a privilege. And I think that we need to fight apathy. We need to start spreading more awareness. We need to start taking more actions. So as the future generation of Indonesia, we need to do just that. Thank you.